of the CTO. Uh, recently I've been working with LMG on Android HAL consolidation. Um, this started around the last connect. Uh, so this is an update on uh, progress in the last uh, six months. So just as kind of as a review, what's the purpose of this project? Uh, what are the problems? So today, Android is a uh, very vertically integrated where you have to build everything from user space, kernel, uh, firmware, trust zone, um, and, and it takes a lot of effort to create a new device uh, with uh, changes in all through the stack. Uh, other problem areas is how do we scale support uh, from going from one board to two boards to 96 boards. Um, other uh, <coughs> problem has been that there's been real no upstream for Android HALs. Uh, and s fortunately, uh, now that's somewhat solved, uh, or at least the, the initial steps are solved uh, with the uh, high key going into AOSP. Uh, and lastly, fragmented driver uh, interfaces where vendor kernels have modified the kernel ABI in different ways that are not upstream. And we're looking to unify those. So kind of uh, goals for the project. Uh, we want to, for new hardware support, that should be in the kernel and uh, get to the point where enabling new hardware uh, requires enabling the kernel. And once you do that, you have support across uh, Android, Chrome OS, traditional Linux distros, uh, embedded distros. Uh, getting to the point where mainline kernels just work. Uh, John Stoltz has been doing a lot of great work there on uh, Nexus 7 support, uh, kind of the end goal here, major end goal here is uh, eliminating the need for custom HALs. So get HALs that are uh, feature complete enough and, and dynamic enough that they can work on different hardware platforms. Um, And then in, in the area of supporting multiple boards, uh, making it easier to add a new device. So one, one question I've heard multiple times this week is, uh, well, high key is in AOSP now. Uh, are there plans to add another board, add Dragon Board, for example, and uh, Bubble Gum? Uh, so I've heard that partly because I've been asking that question, uh, but I've heard it from others as well. And, and this project is aimed at, at making that process easier where it wouldn't even be a question, are we going to add more boards? More boards are just nearly free to add. Uh, and then creating an upstream community for Android devices. So we, we have initial place to do that now with the high key AOSP support. Uh, and we need to morph that into supporting multiple boards uh, and the generic house. So most of the, the project the last six months has uh, been work I've been doing. Uh, it's so only a few resources on it. Um, and the focus has been largely on DRM graphics support. Uh, so, so the the uh, main accomplishments there is uh, we've got an Android M uh, as well as Master now, 
uh, working with uh, Mesa open source uh, GL implementation, uh, along with DRM, Hardware Composer, and Gralic, and 4.4 kernels. And this works on Dragonboard 4.10, the Nexus 7 uh, now, as well as uh, mainline QMU uh, for ARM64 and x86 uh, via the VertIO GPU interface. And there's instructions uh, that apply to the, uh, the device I have created and, and how to compile all this uh, at the URL on the screen. So one, one thing that happened recently, uh, right after Connect uh, in, in San Francisco, was uh, Google released uh, DRM-based uh, hardware composer and Gralic. Uh, these came originally from the Android x86 project. Uh, they were modified by Google uh, for the Pixel C device. Um, and that kind of changed our plans a little bit, but did help provide and uh, giving us an upstream target for DRM hardware composer. Uh, so we've been contributing to that as well as, uh, as Mesa. Uh, support. And this, uh, this work has generated interest uh, from the Android x86 folks, uh, so we've been coordinating some efforts uh, there as well. So now it's uh, demo time. So I have a build uh, for QMU. Uh, this is the x86 build. Um, As you can see, it uh, runs quite well and compared to software graphics. And it's running a 4.4 kernel. Um, there's about uh, five patches for VertIO GPU needed. Those are going into 4.6. Um, and it's the uh, current mainline of QAMU uh, and current uh, uh, Virgil render library, which is needed for the VertIO GPU on the host side. And then have the same uh, configuration. Uh, it's just built for for uh, ARM 64. It runs on QAMU and it also runs on Fredrino. This is uh, the Dragonboard 410. The mouse pointer is a little sluggish because it's not its own cursor plane, but uh, and that's uh, free Gino. Any questions on the demos? So this is uh, Dragonboard, yes, with Fredrina. Sorry? 
it is it, it is my device build, but it's similar to what's in the reference platform build now. So some of the challenges uh, with DRM, uh, major one was kind of selecting hardware platforms. Uh, that's kind of what led me down the QMU route. Um, I've used QMU several times in the past uh, uh, when I didn't have hardware and needed to be able to test out things and I saw this uh, Vert.io GPU that looked interesting also uh, also because the Android emulator has its own uh, host based GPU acceleration um, which is probably not upstreamable so this is a, a candidate for uh, what would be the upstream solution. Um, there's numerous issues around that and that we're not looking at but um, we've done some of the initial steps to get there. Uh, then no DRM based GPU driver support, uh, that's a, another way of saying binary drivers are a problem. Um, so a lot of, initially I was trying to get uh, <coughs> DRM uh, drivers that were just, uh, just the display uh, part of the driver not the rendering part. Uh, to work that actually is more work to get in place than Fredrino was to get working uh, is what I found. Uh, I had it working with frame buffer emulation uh, but that's not really kind of the path forward and the big problem around uh, the display only side is uh, how to do buffer allocations and there's no uh, common buffer allocator uh, for DRM. Uh, so as I mentioned, DRM hardware composer showed up in AOSP um, and we started looking at, the, at, at it. There's a lot of complexities around it. Oh. Sorry. Uh, one example is it does uh, OpenGL based compositing uh, within the hardware composer uh, rather than kicking it back out to Surface Flinger. Um, it was the Pixel C is also a DRM kernel driver and, and the open source DRM hardware composer, uh, but it's not Mesa based, it's closed uh, source NVIDIA graphics. Uh, so it wasn't real clear uh, if it would really work at all. Um, and then there's other challenges, interdependencies between the hardware composer, Growlic, and GPU implementations. So for example, Molly has its own uh, Growlic implementation, uh, all the Growlic handles are extended with uh, private data and the components have dependencies on that private data. And as I mentioned, without the full uh, display and rendering support in DRM, there's kind of no common buffer allocator. Any questions on this? So kind of uh, next steps is the laundry list. I'm, I'm not going to go through all of this, uh, but we've identified some of the problems for us in uh, Hardware Composer, uh, mainly with plain uh, selection and support. Uh, Google is continuing to develop on it and uh, they're working on multi-monitor and uh, presumably hot plug support 
in it. Um, we've had some discussions on Growlic this week. Uh, right now it's using kind of a private interface to Mesa. Uh, we're looking at changing that to a to I think uh, GBM now. Uh, we also, with Mesa, we still want to get uh, some working solution if we don't have GPU support enabled. Uh, so we're looking at software rendering with the uh, LLVM pipe, which is kind of the latest software renderer in Mesa. So this is not just uh, graphics for this project. There are some other uh, accomplishments. Uh, there was a kernel summit session on kind of running mainline kernels on mobile. Uh, not really uh, real actions coming out of that, but kind of uh, helping aware, raise the awareness of the, the problem to, to kind of the non-ARM uh, kernel developers. Uh, one of the low-hanging fruit was a vibrator HAL. It's currently what's in AOSP is based on uh, the timed output driver, which is in staging, kind of has no path to move out of staging. Uh, so we've implemented a LED trigger-based vibrator HAL. And that's under review uh, for AOSP. Then as I mentioned, we have I have a single device config for QMU and uh, Dragon Board. This kind of helps uh, identify what are kind of different problem areas of, of, of compile time settings between platforms and how we can address that uh, going forward to s support multiple boards. Uh, next steps in other areas, so <clears throat> one of the things that had been on our list was video for Linux uh, uh, support of hard on hardware codecs. Uh, there was a session this week on that on Chromium. Uh, this seems to be more and more the direction that things are moving to, uh, so uh, hardware all you hardware vendors uh, should be looking at this um, if you're not already. Uh, if there's problem areas with this, uh, come talk to me. I'd like to hear about them. Uh, so we're looking also at how to uh, how to enable more boards in in AOSP and and kind of how we can get to a single build for high key and dragon board. And we need uh, member participation in this project. Uh, so kind of other areas that near the top of our list are uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, NFC. Um, we know kind of some of the steps that we need to do there, uh, but just no resources to do it. Uh, also, IIO and, and sensor support is another area that we'd like to look at. Uh, this also probably has some overlap with uh, light as well. So six months ago, we made, kind of made the list of all the, all the things uh, that we need to work on. Uh, AOSP keeps adding more things, uh, so now there's uh, NVRAM HAL. Uh, that's uh, for for Trusty. Uh, there's also uh, some Boot Reason and AB uh, partition support that's coming. So uh, Android's moving to to doing. Uh, multiple part A and B partitions where you switch uh, similar to uh, how Ubuntu Snappy works. Uh, 
And that's it. Uh, questions? What's the meaning of A or B updates? Uh, so you, you basically it's ping ponging between two images. So you'll have system A, system B partition. And if you're currently running on A, uh, your uh, OTA update will program it into B. Uh, if you successfully boot, it will switch to B. And if you successfully boot on B, it will permanently switch to B, otherwise it would revert back to A. Uh, and then when you're running on B, it will update partition A and then switch to A. Thank you. So I know next nothing about graphics, but I've, I've read that- Neither do I. <laughs> that Android's moving to Vulkan instead of OpenGL, so how does that affect all of the graphics work you're doing? Uh, so I, I think, uh, I'm not sure how much is public on that. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, for this year it probably doesn't affect things. Um, most, most vendors are s probably still on OpenGL. Uh, it is on the list of things to look at and, and for, for Gino, for example. Um, but so my interest is the Android emulator stuff and the and QMU, right? And, and so as, if I understand correctly, the, that's based on having a Mesa implementation of OpenGL in Android, right? Right. For, and that interacts with the Vert.io GPU stuff. So I guess the question there would be, does Vulkan impact Vert.io GPU? Uh, Rob Clark may know better, but I would guess not because uh, it's the the Android emulator is a high level interface. Uh, I think shuttling OpenGL commands across to the host. Uh, Vert.io GPU is a lot lower level, uh, more like GPU hardware level. So I would it's suspect that it doesn't impact it so much. But you you wouldn't use uh, Mesa anymore, right? Yeah, there will be Vulkan support in Mesa, so the Intel okay, uh, Vulkan support has at, been added to Mesa. So what about, so the, the, the QMU um, Vert.io GPU stuff, does that work on a Windows host? So the, um, I'm not too sure about the QMU part, but what Vert.io is doing is turning things back into GL on the host side. Um, which means I'm not really sure as far as Vulkan. I mean, I guess you could probably turn Vulkan back into GL, but not terribly efficiently. Um, going back a couple to earlier question, I would hope that they're not going to have a hard dependency on Vulkan. I, I thought it was more of a, they're going to support Vulkan and have the Vulkan ICD loader. Um, I wouldn't think that Vulkan would be very beneficial for, as a replacement for GL for the UI rendering or for like Surface Flinger. Okay. Um, that's, I mean, Vulkan is a advantage more for game sort of workloads where you're pushing a lot of state changes and you have a lot of draw calls and stuff. I mean, if you look at a typical game, there, you're doing like thousands of draw calls per frame, and that's not really the, the sort of workload you see for a UI. Um, so I, I don't know anything behind the scenes as far as what in, uh, Google's plans are. But, yeah. All right. So you had a, another question? Um, so my question was, um, so you use upstream QMU, so and the Android emulator comes with other features like ADB shell support, all that kind of stuff, the emulated sensors and stuff. Um, so you didn't need that for your work, or what sort of? Uh, so I, I've been able to use uh, doing it over TCP/IP uh, with the host port forwarding. Uh, that was easy to do once I figured out how. Um, I've thought some about it on 
on what we would do there. I, I think we would want to emulate a USB device, the device controller, and, and do ADB that way. And so then, ideally you'd like oh, uh, upstream cam you to support sort of the same set of features as the, the Android emulator does, just in a nice upstream way. Yeah, and, and kind of do it more like real hardware rather than uh, using the special QMU daemon running in the, in the guest. Okay, all right, thanks. Uh, actually, I have a question for the V4R2. Uh, uh, to my understanding, the Android will come in with the uh, V4R2 implementation, so I'm not sure if there's plan in Linaro uh, for the V4R2. Maybe, it's, maybe you can uh, there's plan, uh, implement the V4R2 in Haiki. Uh, so, well, you said that, not me. <laughs> uh, but uh, assuming that it does happen, then there would be a HAL on the and user space side uh, from Google. Uh, so that all that's left is the driver side. I don't know specifically on high key what plans there are. Anyone else know? Hardware codec support on high key? So I don't, I don't know specifically for high key. My question is about the boot region. I, I have no idea what it is. Mike? So what does it mean, the boot region, for the, I mean, using LSP? Uh, I had to go back and look. It's somewhat related to the AV updates, if I recall correctly. But uh, they have a, uh, how to retrieve uh, what was the boot reason. And is, is that how like uh, reboot bootloader and that sort of stuff work or? No, it's more like what was the cause of the reboot, I think. Okay. So, by the way, back to the QMU part, is, um, do you think that could eventually replace the simulator? Uh, I, th I think there's a long list of things, and uh, the, the Google folks are working on moving all that stuff forward. Uh, they have their own uh, kind of pipe between the host and the guest, and I think there's some work with, for uh, VSOC to replace that as the low-level interface. Um, but then there's all the stuff built on top of that, including the graphics side. Um. So, so that's actually something we're looking at in the virtualization team to try to help Google doing that. And they, they've said that they've ramped up on engineers that want to work on that. And they have sort of seen um, that keeping a fork of QMU for a long, for a long time is a bad idea for, for everybody. Um, and the latest thing we've seen from it is that they actually published a document for anybody working on the emulator about how to think about upstreaming for QMU that um, the maintainers in QMU are reviewing and trying to talk to them. So whether that will actually amount to anything, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but it, Linaro is, is willing to commit some resources to that. Um, but we, we're kind of waiting to see if Google is also interacting because I don't think we can lift the entire thing ourselves. Okay, cool. So what, and on the graphics side, one of the big things that you had mentioned was Windows support. Uh, so I believe mainline QMU can build on Windows generally? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, the, we've, the prototyping we've done of, of sort of, uh, that was mostly on AR64, but running Android emulator type things with upstream QMU, that builds on, runs fine on Mac OS X and Windows and, uh, and Linux. So the, the main thing that gets added here is the, the Virgil Render library, uh, which is pretty self-contained. Uh, it's dependent on OpenGL uh, and probably not much else. Uh, POSIX threads and stuff, I guess. But I, I don't think it currently supports building on Windows, but 
doesn't seem like it'd be an impossible task to get that done. Cool. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you.